Oh. And holes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh hey, welcome to the life. <laughs> Sorry, John. In the written undead, and I'm Chuck. And you, uh, Aiden. Um, this week we bring a little more, say, historical fiction, a little sci-fi thrown in, backing away from the whole undead thing. I get it. We can't. It's our show. We do what we want. This week, Ryan Rose, and Moan, Dungeon Daniel Bell, and myself, a special guest co-host, Aiden Collier, are hanging out David Guard. Welcome in, dude. How's it going? Good. Thank you. Awesome. Looking great. I'm uh, hearing just about every so other word. I don't know if my mic is on or not. Uh, yeah, Jack's being a little bit. Uh, you got temperamental vocals there, Jack. Yeah, we can't really hear you, Jack. Yeah, this happened last. Okay. Yeah. Well. Well. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll. Yeah, I'll take over. Uh, so anyway, David Ningar is a historical fiction author, a mid RPG author, and a sci-fi author. I just happen to have one of his paperbacks, his gladiator story. One of it's perhaps my favorite of his all, of all of them. I've, I've read the sci-fi one, David. Good stuff, but this one takes the cake. Yeah. And so, so anyway, David, cake. man, I, I wanted to ask you for the audience watching, where did you get the idea to write this particular novel? Um, yeah. So Lenista was originally going to be a, just a, a gladiator book. I think we we ran across it last time. It was just going to be gladiators, the story of leveling up the gladiators in the arena maybe throw a bit of magic in there and then after a, you know the first couple of chapters it just went <laughs> it went to pot really uh -huh. <laughs> the characters yep. didn't let me do it and that, that's where it ended yeah. up really it's um you know how it is you you, you write the same yep. um you you get an idea in your head you start going and then it goes somewhere else all right yeah so what are you working on right now Oh, right now is uh, a book. It's historical fiction again, actually. It's um, it's a Norse-inspired historical fiction called Boulder's Children. Um, and it's uh, basically a, a story of a, a father and daughter, or adopted daughter, who <clears throat> one way or another get magical powers um, and end up in the Nine Rings of Helheim. <laughs> so <laughs> basically the first half of the book leads up to Hel uh, Helheim and then the second half, is basically them trying to get to the center to free Boulder and stop Ragnarok. Okay, so um, so are you going to be using now the Norse gods, like uh, Thor and all that? You're not Thor. Make I can't. I, I don't think I can rightly do Thor without <coughs> Chris Hemsworth in my head. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. He just becomes Thor, doesn't he? You now, yeah. Yeah. he did it so well. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've got Loki in it, and I'm trying my hardest not to have him as Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> again, it's like, that is so hard. <laughs> yeah. But I've, um, I've got a picture or two probably of the cover, so you, you can see I've, I've been Ooh. trying to... Uh, yeah, hang on a second. I should have got this up first, really. Yeah, take uh, your time, man. Yeah. Don't worry about yeah, it. Talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, Jack, Jack is having our technical issues, uh, so... He probably is not going to be able to come back, so so it's just going to be the five of us. So if, if anyone if, if anyone's got any questions for Dave, oh, oh here we go. Oh yeah, I seen that on Facebook, but there you go. All this children. Awesome. That's a really that's a really good cover, man. You can, see that? Oh, who, I've got to ask on uh, the right hand side for us, uh, the woman. I was uh, listening to some. Uh, Viking music earlier, and there was a tune. Is, is there some uh, inspiration from uh, some of these uh, uh, YouTube videos? Because I know that I, I listen to uh, music that's appropriate for the thing that I'm writing. Do you listen to that music? Does that influence oh, covers know. and your what you're writing? Do you do you go that route? Create a playlist or anything? I hate that you've asked this question because it's, <laughs> it's so embarrassing. Mm. But I, uh, I have this. Th I've got this technique. I got so I only use one one laptop to write on. So when I open that laptop, then mm -hmm. I only write on it. So then it's it sort of gets me into that. I'm writing now when the yeah. laptop starts to finish, and I do the same with a with a uh, with a playlist. 
and it's the score to Les Mis. And that is a, not a bad score. That is a that's a yeah, hell of a I score. Love, I love that. Plus, I saw it on Broadway. <clears throat> Yeah, there's, there's, no, no, that's, uh, I've, I've, I've done similar in my past. I've just gone, I like this thing, and I put it on. I remember writing an essay in uni, and uh, the guy in the room next to me, uh, it's my first year, uh, sent me a text message saying, "Can you change the CD?" Because I just had it on loop. <laughs> I was like, this is, this is the appropriate thing for this, <laughs> therefore yeah. I'm going to use it. It's like, no, no, that's, that's, that's. This That's pretty good. So it's just you just need a, a focal music rather than it, it has to be specific yeah. for the for the environment that you're writing. That's, That's it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, David, it worked out right for some of them, but <laughs> other times so, you think. Oh, so yeah. David, uh, so 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 what what part of the UK do you reside? I'm on the so, south, right in the southeast. Southeast. So, uh, yeah. So I'm I'm actually closer to France than London. Oh wow. Okay. Oh, so sorry to hear see, that. I know. <laughs> Someone's got to look at it. <laughs> so, 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 I've so, and I work with French people, so. <laughs> so, 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 Aiden, well, it, it, does that put David close to you or, or not winning? Oh, oh, that's a, that's a hell of a thing. Is it, is it, are you closer to France? I'm in Reading, so. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm you, over or nearabouts. So you're probably, yeah, you're probably closer to France than you are to me. Yeah, on that, yeah, it's a, it's a good what it's a two, two and a half hour drive, depending on the M25. Yeah, yeah. call it three, <laughs> call, it, yeah. call it three, and then the queues of four, and then yeah. it's like, I mean, to right, there's South the Mims US. that we can go to, and to, <laughs> to surfaces. Like three hours, it's, it's like it's really far away for us. <laughs> for you, it might yeah. just be uh, <laughs> next day over, it's fine. Uh -huh. we, we don't do like 10 hour drives here. <laughs> So well, David, well, unless you get on the M25 and then it's a 10 hour drive to go around one junction. <laughs> <laughs> I live in David, Texas. It's a 20 hour drive just to get out of Texas, no matter where you are. <laughs> oh, thank God. Oh, wow. That <laughs> bad, huh? Yeah, Richard uh, knows. Yeah. Oh, uh, the trap, trap, trap. The distance is that bad, or is it traffic dungeon? No, it's just really big state. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I could imagine. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not like Puerto Rico. It's not like Puerto Rico. You could get from one side to the other in less than, in less than three hours. Right. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Puerto Rico is uh, very much like the UK, where there's what is it, forty miles to the coast? Is... No, no, it, no, it's a hundred. It's a hundred twenty miles west to east, and uh, about eighty north to south. So oh. you're less than forty miles to the coast. Yeah. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> I mean, I'm on the southern coast. I, I, I'm, over, I'm only five minutes, a uh, five-minute drive from the beach, from where, where I am to the south, to the Caribbean Sea. So yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, just, I'm back. Uh, yeah, I'm hey, it's about a five-minute walk. Yeah. <laughs> walk. I, I grew up. I actually grew up on the seaside. <clears throat> so I, like, the beach. I did a stayaway job down in uh, Brighton. We were working North Burstead, um, and we stayed in uh, Feltham. And it was literally a two minute walk from the BNB, and we just walked along the beach uh, to get to wherever we were going. Like, that, that was an absolutely brilliant stay away job. That was yeah. it. Go dig some archaeology, get walking on the beach. Because there's something about walking along the beach that I think just oh, yeah. transcends all mm -hmm. countries that like, go down, watch the waves. Yeah, you like, can't beat it, can you? Yeah. Oh my God. Are you guys going <laughs> to break out pina coladas and start we are. bonding yeah. and yep. stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah dungeon, you gotta come out yeah. here one day as you can. Man. Bonding, one day. not bondage, Dan. Bonding, not bondage. Right? There's differences. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. There's not much of a bondage, difference. Okay, dungeon. I heard come out in a onesie. Was that not? It's 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 what. That's not what we're meant to do. Sorry, I'll uh, go get changed. <laughs> oh, we got Jack back. Hey, Jack. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna find out what sound. I mean, I was talking about ZZ Top earlier, and now I'm thinking. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> uh -huh. It's the Wait, glasses. Oh, yeah. So am I breaking Jack. up or anything? Uh, no, you're actually uh, better than the first time, but I'm going to try to turn it off my cam. Uh, I'll still be audio. Uh -huh. um, just see if that helps, and if it doesn't, I'll pop back on there. Yeah, all right, um, let's do that. 
So I have a question for David. And actually, it's a question for David and Angel and Jack, I guess. Uh, Richard, you don't do the lit, I don't know what the fuck that means type of book, right? <laughs> right. That, that, okay. That's what RPG stands for, right? I don't know what the fuck that means, right? Yeah. Exactly. Nope, yeah. Rocket propelled, <laughs> you know. Yeah, RPGs. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the only the only style of book I've read is is Angel's books, his zombie ones. And I know I've told this story, but David hasn't heard it, so I'm saying it again. Um, I was reading it thinking it was just a normal zombie book, and all of a sudden it started. It just stops and goes into this level up, power this, blah blah blah. And I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> And I just went ahead and started continue reading, and it kept popping up. For me, that style, uh, you know, the video game writing, that pulls me out of the story a bit. So I'm not a big fan of it. But I've been right. told that not everybody levels up as much as Angel's books. So in your books, David, and I notice you bounce all over the place with your subject line. <laughs> is that like a really big thing where it's like every every other chapter you got to do your level up stuff? No, you, I mean. I, I try to um, to keep it to relevant within a story, um, okay. but then there's a fine line between having level ups and stats there for no reason, just because you want to write in the genre, and having it over overbearing. So you, you try and make it so it's it's pertinent to the characters, to the progression of the story, um, but you don't you don't want to have it so, you know, it's, you know what's the point in it being in there if it's not worth being in there <laughs> so you oh, right a lot like my my mum for example hates my books she absolutely hates my <laughs> trash, trash oh, every, every, I, that's I feel your pain on that i feel your pain that's uh, so when i when i, I give them i give mom and dad the, the books so I, you know i read these and then my mom will say well that is all right but i skipped through all of the stat boxes or the level up, <laughs> which is like it's fine if you want to do that but you also then think that the stats and the level ups have got to be there for a reason otherwise you're just writing a book right yes it yeah, takes you yeah. out of that genre so you've got so, to tie yeah. them in as well uh so mm -hmm. well, i i did a similar thing to you i said uh one of my uh early books it, my first one was just my tester book uh, it was a noir one, uh, and I was like, "Oh, my my nan's a writer, and, and my mum writes, so I'll, I'll send send it to them." And uh, yeah, there was feedback uh, <laughs> as right. well. And that that didn't even have stat sheets. So <laughs> what's going on there? Um, now, Angel, uh, yeah. in your in your King Minos, uh, I understand that's built more like on, uh, I guess one of the building games you know that you yeah, know like, like you're starting a game where you you have to do so much to build a get a building and then upgrade it so i'm assuming you got a lot more of the level up stuff yeah ba ba basically uh to to build on what david was saying i th there's two kinds of little rpg two main types you got the creamy stuff which is not too many stats and then what i write is the crunchy you know with all, with all the stats in the world now that's now, crunchy yeah, that's crunchy, right? Now, what what okay. you were reading is crunchy, uh, Dan, Dan, because it because the stats they're, they're not just there to be there. They they, they do tell the story in, in a certain way, like the ammo pickups and all that. Right. If you ever play, have you ever played Resident the Evil Dungeon? Yes, of course. So that 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 that's what I was going for, more like a Resident Evil style kind of game, and uh. <laughs> <laughs> I have to calculate about anything. And, 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 and one note about that, Jack, I'm terrible in math now. I used to be really good in math, and now I'm just absolutely terrible because Jack has got to... Same here, same here. Yeah, because Jack has got to fix all my math because I'm, I've become I've become terrible in math. I, 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 and the, the crazy part is I used to be mediocre in English and really good in math, and now I've switched. So now I'm good in English, but mediocre and really bad in math, Ashley. Oh, almost as bad as the Tennessee Titans this year. And, <laughs> Just oh, have to throw that sport reference. He, he Shots fired. You now, Jack. <laughs> yeah. No, I, but, but, yeah, I know. I, I, I know. And my, my Giants are no better. I mean, though we're going to eat the But, yeah, enough of the sports references. But what I'm, what, what I'm going to get into, uh, 
dungeon is uh why well, why is crunchy crunchy basically means that the stats are you're gonna see a lot of stats but they do provide more of a they build they do build more of the story if you know what i'm saying you know the the more into it the more it, it kind of builds the story more and i you know i write and like the king Mino series i do write it it's, a, it's like if you ever play sim city dungeon or anyone no no, it's yeah. pretty much strictly zombie games, first person shooter, no stats, oh, okay. just kill. Yeah, so, so yeah, yeah, I kind of grew up with that, but I also grew up with a lot of uh a lot of uh you know building games like uh Pharaoh, season yeah. three, yeah, and David knows what I'm talking about. The 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 the, the, yeah. the, 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 the impression games, the impression city building games for Sierra. <clears throat> I'm sure Aiden yeah, might have a clue people, too. People of our age. Is, uh, yeah, we've got uh, memories of sitting in, sitting in a basement playing on. I mean, the, yeah, the thing about the thing, the thing about us, of, uh, we, yeah, could, we, we grew up with Sierra games. Uh, Sierra mm. was, for for us PC games, Sierra was the, the like the biggest g gaming publisher out there was Sierra, and so yeah. we, so so yes, so, so but that's why I kind of got the idea from. So that's what you want to know, Dungeon. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Also, okay. can I just add that. to this? Oh, oh sorry, you go first, David. Uh, first, you go I was first. So, what, what you want when you're when you're reading a, a lit RPG or game is you want the characters or, uh, to mm -hmm. to strive to level up so that they can so they can best some enemy or complete some task. So there is a, a willing to level up rather than it's just a commentary on what's happening to the character. It's uh, it's a the character knows what's going to happen if yeah. they hit level five, level ten. So they strive to do that so mm -hmm. that they can continue in the story or the game or whatever they're playing. It's, so it's really it, it, a, it's a big mechanic. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly like you would in a computer game. Like I want, want to go and defeat this character, therefore I need to level up to this level to be able to do said thing. Therefore, that becomes part of the character thing. There, yeah, before it becomes part of the story and it integrates it all. Uh, going back on it, I would I will say as well. Um, I uh, my uh, big series is uh, Lit FPS, which is slightly different. It's all about the FPS game, so it's all about building up everything so that when you go into it, you can then fight at that way, uh, yeah. at that level, and get all of those things. And then afterwards, you get the points and you spread them around and you go back into the thing. So mm -hmm. you you build up at the beginning and then use what you've got uh in the thing and then you notice and then do the same thing again it's, it's, mm, it's there was a repetitive mm -hmm. part of it but that's part of having a genre that there is that repetitive this is a thing yeah. that mm -hmm. is done within and that's what makes the genre yeah so do now 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 dungeon i want to expand even more because now there's different kinds of rpg you got what I write is, is what they call kingdom building or empire building. That's the kind of lit RPG it is. The subgenre is kingdom building. Then you got okay. what what Aiden what makes is uh, lit FPS. The FPS are lit RPGs. The ones that play like a first person shooter. Or oh, my zombie series is like a lit, up, lit FPS. Then 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 you got the then you got the stories that take place in, in a virtual world. You know the the virtual world uh, RPGs, which like. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you write, David. Like the ones that take place, yeah, in the virtual world. Then you have a, uh, then you have a turn-based RPG, which is my betrayal of the canine series. Is a is a turn-based, more like a dun traditional my Dungeons and Dragons. Nosses, my Nosis series is the same. The character right. actually gets stopped at certain points to wait till right. other people act, and then the game mechanics kick in. Right. <laughs> Then, yeah, and then and then, and then then of course, and then you got I I, I, I don't know how to I'm gonna butcher it. A sec, a sec, Isaki. You know the, the, yeah. the, the kind of oh, the kind of story yeah. that, that 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 take place in the actual game world. There's no there's no there's no real world or virtual world. The the, the 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 game world is the real world. It takes place in the actual game world. Mm. And and then and then and then of course you got my personal favorite, the Havams. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's... Late night reading. Uh, late yeah, night reading. Yeah. yeah, basically Dungeon Gen, uh, but the fifth survivor wet dreams. That's my those, are my, those two are my habums. Those are also the those, that's when I got into the habums sub genre a little bit. Which they they, 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 they did okay. Good, um... They did okay, but 
I just couldn't see myself why he's smut for the rest of my life. So I, I had to get out of it and well, just go to the store. I don't fiction. know. Angel, if they only did okay, you may not be able to write very good smut. I could help you, though. <laughs> you know, to be fair, you could, uh, 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 you know, you could help when, any of us. <laughs> so when, when, when I mean okay, I mean sales-wise. You know, I mean, sales-wise, it did okay. That's what I meant by sales. But I'm going to cook my... But, but nothing like my historical fiction is done, you know. Like nothing like my historical fiction is done. It's I was done just enough. yanking your chain, Angel. I know, I know. I, I did. I back back like a, good, a good example. In, um, if you wanted to see it uh, just on here, this is one of my little RPGs. So uh, halfway through a page, you might get that. Yeah. You've leveled up. So then it's just like uh, standard text and then the... A little notification there you've leveled That's up. That's kind of a nice way to do yeah. it, actually. Uh, somebody is somebody's prepped. This is this is fascinating. Well, yeah. well, <laughs> I'm I'm Don't call me uh, Jack. That's yeah. a good title. <laughs> hey! <laughs> now, 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 I, I wanted to stop because Jack was asking a question for us, Aiden and David and, and me. Yeah. What are you? What 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 are you? What are, you, what are some of your favorite uh, knit RPG writers you like? And, and, and I'll start. I got a, I got quite a few of them that I enjoy. Like one of them is Charles Dean. He's one of my, he's my man crush. And I think that's not. I think Aiden, you probably know that already. He's my man crush, Charles yeah. Dean. He's a lovely bloke. He's the nicest person you'd ever. Yeah. Meet. he's my man he's crush. So good. <laughs> you know, and, and he's probably my favorite. After him comes Dave Wilmoth. Awesome, <laughs> grumpy motherfucker, but he's a good writer. He's very talented, he's, but he's, 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 he's a good writer. There's, yeah, I got <laughs> issues. Uh, <laughs> I've crossed him once. Yeah. Then, uh, <laughs> then Jez, then Jez, I, I, I'm not, I'm going to butcher his nasty name, so but you know, I'm Jez. Huh? Kyle? Yeah. Yeah. The, the Age of Stone series, one of my favorite, yeah, Age brilliant. of Stone. Yeah, Woody and Woody and stuff. Kevin Sinclair, awesome as well. You know, wonderful writer, Kevin Sinclair. Was it uh, who wrote the um uh the Roman one? Oh God, what's his name? Oh, D D Henniger. Dean Henniger, yeah. yeah, he's yeah, my he's my guy. Ma yeah, he, 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 he's the he's the one who he's <laughs> the one who inspired the Grace of Tony series written by me. He's the one that inspired my Roman series. He's the one who inspired mm. it. So credit also, to him. Did found out after we talked uh, last time, uh, David, that the series that you mentioned of his was published after mine. It okay. was I was inspired by his writing, and we both seem to have gone into the same place <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> in, oh, in that okay. writing, yeah. yeah. Which, which is pretty fucking cool. Uh, so, and, right, then, and then and then and then for sci-fi, Don Chapman. When it comes to the sci-fi stuff, she's awesome. Don Chapman, wonderful. I want to hold my hand up that I I have her as a, a friend on Facebook, and she's an awesome person. But I still haven't read any of her stuff, and I'm really embarrassed. <laughs> oh, yeah, about you gotta, it. yeah, you got to read some of the stuff. Yeah, I, I, I need to get there. She's yeah, got one, a, um, an audio book up that's um, it's, it's about her personal experiences. It's not a um, it's not a fictional book, and that's worth a go. It's very. Um, touches the bone it's yeah it's oh oh i'll have to i'll have to have moments with that one that will be one that will take me about a year to read yeah and it's, go it's in like and out of it minutes and stop yeah, yeah and then look at, look at some pictures of kittens and stuff it's, yeah it's very much so it's i had that i was uh was listening to a uh podcast mm -hmm. about uh it was true a true crime podcast i used to listen to quite a lot of it yeah and um there was one and there was someone who'd microwaved the baby and uh they said it was an accident and uh yeah i know uh the um so he uh put on the podcast he turned on his microwave and went listen to how long it was and i had to turn off halfway wow. through the time uh because i was crying on site and said are you okay i'm like Yes, of course I'm fine. I'm British. And carried on digging a hole. I was like, I am not fine. I am not fine. I could listen to something happy and found a D and D podcast because that's what I generally do for my comfort zone. <laughs> but, uh, happy place. Yeah, happy place time. <laughs> but yeah, that All was all. Right. Oh, that was brutal. Absolutely yeah. brutal. All right, David. 
get away from this shit. Um, I don't know the rules, uh, you know, in this, but um, have you ever purposely had your characters not level up, even though they pretty much accomplish something uh, yeah, just to actually, mess with them? Um, not just to mess with them. Um, it, actually, it's, it's in this book, so don't call me Jack. TM. So that um, <laughs> so the character uh, the, the, that's set in Victorian London, um, and it's about essentially Jack the Ripper or roundabouts Jack the Ripper. Um, and the main character, the only way for him to level up is to to kill people to take their souls. But love he, it. He does. He doesn't like doing it. But the only way for him to get home is for him to level up. And so it's like a. He, he doesn't want to level up, but he has to. He doesn't want to kill people, but he has to. So I love that. Kind of, uh, uh, David, they, they, uh, Jack wants to know about your Norse, what, what, you know, work in progress. I know you were talking about it, but he was off. So, you know, if you don't uh, mind start talking about it again. Uh, yeah, can do. No problem. It's, yeah, don't, just don't worry that he wasn't done answering my question, yeah, Jack. Well, yeah, I can, I can only answer one question at a time. <laughs> but I'll bring it back up. Yeah, J Jack is my. Uh, yeah, I want I want the attention. You know, um, dun yeah, Dungeons and Dragons love attention. So it's turned into a bit of a monster, actually, this book, because um, I always try to write to a hundred thousand words. Uh, it, that's like a, my autistic trait. Like, get to a hundred thousand words, and you've got a book. That's <laughs> you know, pretty that's, impressive. That's how it works. Um, so, yeah, so I've got to about 110 on this book. And I'm about halfway through. So at oh, the my moment, God. <laughs> at the moment, it's like 140,000 words. It's like a monster. But So the, the premise is that the, um, the, there's, a, there's a chasm, a great chasm between West and East, um, and no one's allowed to cross it um, as part of the, the law of the world. Um, if one thing leads to another, these two people that are father and a daughter cross the chasm and find a village. And it's essentially, if, if you drink the water in this village, you get the magical power. And it could be, it's, it's the power is anything, or it could be anything, but it's what you need the most at that particular moment. So within the settlement, you get people that can make food out of nothing or fire out of nothing or you know, that kind of thing. Um, but then they find out they can't actually leave once they've got this power. So that's everyone's stuck in this little circle um except the the main character the female main character whose power is to let people leave so she lets everyone leave and this settlement has decided that they're going to destroy the world with this army of super powered beings that they've all got power from the gods um with the hope that they can release boulder from hell which is an, another norse myth so you've got like um boulder hoda Loki, all sort of interacting before the story takes place, um, and essentially they need to free Boulder from Hell to stop Ragnarok, because Boulder going to Hell is one of the signs of Ragnarok. Um, hmm. So you know the, the main characters then get in, entwined in a sort of battle between mis uh, magical soldiers or magical warriors and everyone else in the world. Um, and they just they go north into the thimble winter, which is like a, a never ending. A yeah. Carry up. But I have a question when you finish. <laughs> oh, I'm going. To have, I'm, going to I'm doing schoolyard shit here. See, no, he's just afraid Jack's going to jump in in front of him. He's like, "Hey, I'll, can I be next?" Go ahead, <laughs> David. Yeah. So, yeah. so they travel north and they find the entrance to to hell, basically skipping a few chapters, um, and they find that you have to be in. They have to go to hell work through the nine rings of hell so each ring of hell has a different kind of people you've got um the first ring is just normal people uh, sorry the first ring is just a mist creature then the second ring is like normal people that didn't die in battle and then there's the yoknar then the warriors then you've got draugr then you've got fenrir you know it's like every ring is something oh, more difficult draugr. than a last <laughs> so i've got a picture of Jared or someone um Oh, drug yeah, or so a fucking it, nightmares. It's like in mythology or other stuff. Anyway, uh, tell me, carry on. I, that was me being. So uh, basically, they're working their way through um, to get to the center of Helheim, um, trying to get across every difficulty as they go to free Boulder, and that—that's the story. They need to free Boulder to 
prevent Ragnarok. That's the interesting. So, so, I like how ever... Go ahead. I forgot. Uh, you called dibs. Yeah, so... It's, my, my, it, <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, yeah. So, uh, talk about Draugr. Like, Draugr appear in D&D as well. Uh, I, I've used them quite a lot. I've had a few of my players get annoyed about the way that I use them. But... <laughs> <laughs> one of the things obviously with uh, I presume most of us know about all of the stuff that's going on with Wizards of the Coast and the uh, original gaming license uh, going on right now because it's a gaming thing there's a lot of blank stairs right here <laughs> alright there's a, there's a whole legal thing they've just kind of backed down and just gone and nope, we're not going to do it because the fans said no, which is a kind of a win for the fans, but a bad win for the fans of type of thing. However, uh, obviously, as the Baldur's uh, is Baldur's Gate is a place in D&D. Have you encountered at any point with uh, any of this? I know, obviously, the D&D uh, &D draws from a lot of real-world mythology, so you can reuse it. But have you ever encountered any sort of pushback on that or, or worry about using, say, boulders or Draugr or anything <laughs> like that on it? Or have, you, have you looked it up? Because, the, to be yeah. honest, I did look up the uh, OGL that people demanded that they still use. I was like, please don't, please don't, please don't, please let them replace this because this is horrendous. Uh, please don't. But, yeah, it's a, it's a thing. So I didn't, I didn't know it was such a big thing. I knew, uh, I, I, I'm aware that there's a game called Boulder's Gate in its own right. Mm. Um, and I was very careful to make sure that I don't use any text that looks similar in the 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 title of the book or anything like that but oh, right. beyond that every, every one of my sources is um basically online so, it's so you, you don't embrace yourself yeah it's i mean they're 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 part of norse mythology you can't really get around that fact and the same yeah. with boulder i mean i've i've used his name because that's who he is but, beyond but using that, him no as yeah. the god uh, so you, you 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 get around it uh that way it's sort of get around it why are we saying get yeah, around it's like, it it's like, <laughs> it's, it's, write it's, a story it's, about jesus who's trademarked it yeah yeah exactly <laughs> it's the same sort of thing it's it's a bit it's a bit insane uh everything that's going on at the moment but yeah, I just thought it was a it's a thing because i um so that, what i what i understand <laughs> from what i understand is if if uh, a game, say Baldur's Gate, had Draugr <laughs> in it, and they had yellow eyes, they held a short sword, and they did this one magic spell, and then you that made them bigger, spell. yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you used that, then you would, you could potentially open yourself up to it. Yeah, but, you infringe upon the IP yeah. if you do certain things with them, but yeah, having an actual, it's like you know, if you put humans in the story. It's they're, they're a thing, uh, yeah, yeah. Humans exist. Uh, yeah. oh, I hope it's, it's exist. when you start naming them. If you if you name one Harry Potter, you might, yeah, like that Russian <laughs> did that one time. <laughs> All right, so can I throw them. some yeah. something new in here? Yeah, go ahead. Richard Ryan Rose. Yep, is Buford ever gonna go lit RPG, whatever this is? I don't see that happening. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not. One, I don't understand the lit RPG. I'm not really welcome to the club. Point inclined to, <laughs> I just want to write my books. I don't want to have to worry about leveling up or any of that math shit because I'm terrible at math anyway. So, hey, gotcha. I'm terrible at math too. <laughs> so, Did you um, see what my wife's accountant said to me. <laughs> so, Richard Jack has told us, probably not realizing you were going to be on the show today, which is awesome, by the way. You know, happy you got out of jail free card. Yeah, <laughs> um, Jack promised us you're going to read us the first ten chapters of the new book. Go for it. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, by, by, by ten he means all. <laughs> for any of you guys have, that have read the Wild-eyed Southern Country Boys, is yes, that it? Not, not like Southern yep. Boys. Nope. Southern Boys. Yeah. Um, Keep seeing it pop up. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It, it's it's really good. But um, Richard's been procrastinating for 19 years for book three. <laughs> so any information we could pull out of him is awesome hey just so you know i wrote for like from nine yep. o'clock in the morning this, this is the book in question yep. by yep. the way Ooh. Yeah, new cover uh, art comes going. 
Yeah, new cover art for the first two books are coming out soon with the same guy that did my uh, third book there. Yeah, did you guys see that that cover when they posted it? Yes, I saw it. I, I yeah. love, love it, man. Love it. It was pretty good, all except the Jack Facebook's character. Facebook's got no to me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's got Jack on it. That makes the cover, you know. I wasn't sure if that was a, a joke or not. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. <laughs> and it, it sort and, of and, is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I wrote like uh, from nine o'clock yesterday morning to about eleven o'clock last night. Ooh! Oh wow! Put in the whole wow. day. That's yeah. a good set. Wait Got a minute! Yesterday was Friday. In. Weren't you supposed to be protecting the country yesterday? I was. I was checking my email. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I responded to the email, then I went back to writing. You know. Yep. Also, also, Richard. There are no the nuclear prequel. weapons aimed at our country. We're all good. Also, this is the prequel. Look. Mm -hmm. mm. That could be redone. Yeah. You've got also, uh, some good also, feedback. I die in the book. Quit, quit bragging, Angel. Yeah. I got the books yeah. too. You just couldn't see them because, you know, I, I, I do have a camera question off. here, though. Uh, so, uh, those covers are that do have a theme. There's you got your dark blue <laughs> and you got your red, right, and stuff like that. Are the new covers going to be uh, creating a new theme for the covers then that you do? Well, yeah. I mean, I just wanted to take a less cartoony spin and something that looks more realistic, something darker and bad or badass. And, Right. Uh, yeah. This, this new uh, this I, new uh, artist is phenomenal. He's doing a great job. So. Yeah. 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 He did. Uh, oh, my artist is also that. absolutely amazing. Um, I do my own books. So anyway, carry on. <laughs> I, I was going to ask you, David. Uh, who does your covers, David? Who's your cover this I, I do. Oh, really? you? Oh. Yeah. Those are pretty yeah. badass covers. Wow! Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I looked. I looked yeah. you up before the show, and I was like, "Do you use like some kind of software? Cool. Wow! Um, kind of software, or you just draw it, or whatever?" Uh, I usually use um, a mixture of. I, I basically pay for Shutterstock images, um, and then just Photoshop it and draw. I've got uh, the iPad. I draw on. Um, and what I tend to do is I make five or six covers and then decide which book I'm going to write next. <laughs> <laughs> so, in, my, in my little iPad here, I've got the, the little list I've got. Here's one. Here's I like one. the title. Can hell. <laughs> you should probably uh, go, go, I mean, go find boy, one of those really? websites where you can just drop the ones you're not using and make a bit David. of extra spare to pay for the editors. <laughs> David, you should, do a, you should do cover designs. Yeah, yeah that's uh, pretty impressive. This was this one was drawn. I drew this from scratch. That one's mine. Oh, that is that is uh, that's awesome. We don't tend to call ourselves Jack because obviously we've got a Jack. But <laughs> I have trouble with stick figures. I can't draw worth a shit. So it's. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I enjoy I, it. Behind my computer, I have covered the wall in artwork that I've done. So, <laughs> yeah, I had a look at some of your cartography actually. It's was, oh, oh, did you manage to get that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've got some uh, more coming up if I can actually bother to get back on Photoshop this week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I practiced Photoshop for a few years, so yeah, I got pretty good at it. Is, oh, um, okay. uh, work, we used the really old, old CAD, not AutoCAD, the thing that came before, and I refused to use it. <laughs> my boss well, was like, oh, my, um, use it, and I turned him around and told him to fuck off. So. <laughs> well, my, my training is, is AutoCAD. I'm a civil engineer, basically. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I, when I first started, when I was 16, we used to print off the AO drawings draw on them, measure them, scale rule, that kind of... You, oh, you know. God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've done, I'm an uh, illustrator, can't talk with you. I've, yeah, I've done, um, been there, done that, yeah. yeah. So I'm, a, I'm very good <laughs> at making 3D models. That's yeah. bas that's my specialty. And my latest thing that we've uh, done is my son is um, doing a CAD class at school, in primary school, wow. and he's designing stuff better than i could do when i was like in sixth form because uh, <laughs> technology and everything like that but yeah it's, yeah. it's tough. one of the, the biggest picture on my art wall is actually one of his and it's it looks like a kid's drawing but it's not i don't know how to post it into here but i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna have an attempt so carry on with with other other things and i'm gonna see if i can uh show you this because uh, i was very impressed with this because this looks 
uh, Richard, uh, Nee yeah. Edwards is asking the the tough question: What's the release date for your new book? <laughs> Five years yeah. from now. Yeah, yeah, uh, twenty thirty two. But now my uh, <laughs> I am writing the last three chapters. Then I got a short epilogue at the end, and then it's just uh, doing the editing. I'm going to release it on paperback and uh, digital first, and record the uh, audio book shortly thereafter versus waiting for the audio book to be done because people have been waiting long enough. So probably uh, end of February, uh, the first part of March, I am, uh, I'm officially re going on terminal leave the, a week from today and I'll have a lot more writing time on my hands. All right. And Jack says he went to school to not AutoCAD. Jack said. Well, you're think? automatically a CAD. Richard, are you willing <laughs> to give us any any insight into book three? That's uh, Douglas D Douglas K. Frazier who made that comment. <laughs> Jack's ass. And yeah, <laughs> Douglas said the same thing. We've already got a preview of Jack's ass on the cover reveal. I've got it on my uh, <laughs> and, page. So and uh, Richard and me on it. <laughs> and me, Edwards is asking Richard, are you getting the same narrator as before? Yes. Yeah, uh, right. Steve is already lined up for it. I, I checked with him uh, a couple of days ago. <laughs> pre -order. You guys read that one? Yeah. I got told if uh, I pre-order, I would get a half nude of Jack and the angel guy. Angle guy. Angle guy. Yeah. Angel yeah. Guy. Well, that'll well, cost I extra. I could be between the time. <laughs> cost Without extra. the things we do for pre-orders. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> I mean, but, but for that, wouldn't you need an OnlyFans? <laughs> What's that? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you need an OnlyFans for that? <laughs> All right, Angel I want to go back with David here for a minute. The... If you guys don't mind. Let me steer uh -huh. the ship. Okay. Yeah, All right, yeah. David, let's go back to um, your Circles of Hell book. Um, yeah. One thing I always enjoy is when somebody decides their characters are going to go down and deal with the Circle of Hell, and they all have their own idea of what the circles are. Uh, the The last book I listened to was uh, What Fresh Hell Is This? And the nine circles of a hell are there. And he had a pretty cool pretty cool setup for him. So what is your setup again? Is it is it literally per demon? Or do you have like, on this level, you're going to suffer in this way? It's, it is like that. But there's not necessarily suffering everywhere. Because uh, in Norse mythology, when you die or when you go to hell, it's not always a bad thing. It's, it's just another place. It's another plane. So okay. uh, on my, the first circle, it was, it was pretty bad. It's just like a, it's a mist creature that, that roams the circle to basically try and kill people or keep them within the mist. That's, that's the point of the first circle. So um, do they just wander around doing nothing or...? Does your well, book not well, get into that that it does. detail? Yeah, the the first so the what the mist does is you can only see within a few feet of yourself, um, and the mist will call out to you for help as though it's one of your loved ones. Oh, so messing with you're you! You're in a perpetual state of trying to chase this voice. Oh. Um, and in my one, it's basically eventually you'll get stuck in a tar pit. <laughs> because that's what the mist is doing. So inside the tar pit, you'll see the the skeletons of everyone trying to reach their loved one. I was going to say the um, thing that I was showing yeah. is uh, this is Milton's poems, my nineteen twenty six copy uh, ish of <clears throat> of those poems, and yeah, there's yeah, it's uh, pretty dark. <laughs> it's pretty dark that shit. <laughs> yeah, Silent Hill type of mist. Yeah. Yeah, so just, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, what's in this? Take us through the rest of the levels, and if you don't mind. Crossover, yeah, yeah. So they cross over into the second, which is, the second ring was designed for the people of the humans that have died that, that can't get into Valhalla. So the ones that haven't died um, in battle. So they, these are the people that die of old age or sickness. Um, and what happens is when they get to the second ring, they they revert to a healthy version of themselves. So everyone in this second ring is happy. They're all in, it's a big city. There's vendors everywhere. It's like, it's a nice place to be. 
Um, but there's one rule is no one can touch each other. So, oh, so, oh, 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 oh. so it's like a, it's a paradise, but you don't really want to be there for too long because yeah, you know, that's like see. torture in itself. Um, so that it, <clears throat> basically at any point, if you die within any of the rings, you get taken to become a Draugr. So what's, that's, what's a Draugr? It's basically like a, a spirit walker. It's an undead. Yeah. It's nice. a, a kind of vampire like you need to use Hawthorne to stake them down within a peat bog, uh, unless they rise again out of the peat bog and come back at you. There is no way to kill them. They are the original. It's like OG vampire for uh, the Scandinavian society. And they can shape oh. you. And oh. they can shape you. Oh, <laughs> that changes it up. Yeah, and yeah they are fucked up. What's an OG <laughs> vampire? Oh God, vampire! What? What is? Uh, yeah, yeah, original. Okay, OG, original. Yeah. Sorry, guys, I'm not versed in some of this. Zombies, I'll talk your you know your ears out, but uh, sorry, I'm too young for you, aren't I, Dan? I'm only yes, 30. you are. All of you are. Your children. I'm only yes. 37. <laughs> you. <laughs> All right, David, level three, please. Uh, level three is the kings of men. Um, so this is basically the, sorry, not king, that level three. That's level four. Level three is is the bastards. It's the worst of humanity. Um, that's so where I sit. Yeah, it's it's basically the ones that that want to be bad but couldn't have got into Valhalla. Uh, okay, you've been reading basically. this. <laughs> <laughs> and the fourth, the fourth is the kings of those men. So they are the ones that sort of pull the strings, tell people where to go. Um, okay. Then the fifth is is the Jotnar people. So you probably see them as portrayed as ice giants, that kind of um, creature. They're not really giants. They're just they're like a, they're a bit like trolls. So they're okay. sort of, they're just a little bit bigger than than people. And then the the next oh, ring, trolls come from hell. Yeah. Yeah. So the, <laughs> the minor vegetarian. Yeah, <laughs> hell is actually a place where they think trolls come from in Scandinavia. Hell is actually yeah. a uh, town. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so then the, <laughs> is the, the champions of the Jotun are their most fierce warriors. Um, then the the seventh is the plains of Garma. So that's it's a wolf that's basically Fenrir, but not Fenrir. Um, he he and his pack basically travel around these plains and kill anyone that comes near. Um, the yeah, the eighth um, the eighth was it's the fountain of all water in the mortal realm. So it's it's another one of these myths. Um, so there's three three great wells in in Norse mythology, and this one uh, feeds every <laughs> river and sea on the earth. So that, that's where that lives, and that's where the Nagalfar ship is, which is basically a, a big ship filled with the undead. Um, and that's where the Draugr live. Hmm. And then the ninth, the ninth ring of hell is reserved just for the gods. I need to uh, start learning some North mythology. It sounds like I've missed out. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot of crazy, crazy fucking shit that goes on. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> I love the story. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's weird. It's uh, an uh, Irish moth. Uh, mythology as well it is, I mean, the, the whole, is um, similar and also just as fucking mental the, the whole story I, I told on the other podcast the whole story behind the book is is about boulder um who was a, a shining god like everyone loved him he was beloved by everyone um he would, he would walk through streets and he'd shine like the sun everyone would smile um, and his mother went around to everything in the universe or everything in the world and, and made them promise not to ever hurt Boulder. So once every, every living thing promised um, that they'll never hit, hurt Boulder. So he would go around and people would throw rocks at him. People would throw knives at him, cut him, and it would all just bounce off because they had promised. And this is like innate objects would promise, you know, like this tree won't hurt, hurt Boulder, like, <laughs> that, that kind of level. Mm. Um, and everything except the mistletoe promised. Uh, so Loki, being a dick, um, had a spear carved out of mistletoe. Oh no, Loki was a dick again. We didn't. <laughs> well, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> well, the god of mist. Yeah. Yeah. He had the spear carved out of mistletoe. Gave it to Boulder's brother Hoda, 
and said, you know, throw this at Bolger. <laughs> it won't hurt him. Everyone will love it because it will make him look big and strong. And, and Hoda threw it and killed his brother, Boulder. And so that's why Boulder went to hell. Um, this is the real story. So <laughs> Boulder's in hell. Um, and his mum is basically beside herself. She goes around and, and goes to hell, the, the girl version of hell, the, basically what Norse would be, the Grim Reaper or the devil, and says, can you send Boulder back to me? And, and hell says, well, we'll send, we, we can send him back but only if everything in the world cries for Boulder. So then his mum goes around to everything in the world again and says, can you shed a tear for Boulder? And then he'll come back. And everything says, yeah, no problem, cries, except for Loki again. <laughs> and so Boulder stays in hell, and that is the start of Ragnarok. It's it's, wow. it's it, one of those in, insane... Um, the Scandinavian mythology, uh, the Irish mythology as well, is absolutely not in the whole uh and greek it's there's this whole uh idea that um that we've got in modern society that comes out of uh say christianity judaism islam uh, the, those religions that are the that god is perfect that god cannot do but in those older religions it's the the gods are something to be fought against the there are things that we can do there are things that that we can oh, I don't know, that words the english language really fucks up at this point um <laughs> but yeah there, there's um so we can worship but it's not worship it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a it's a thing so we can uh see these people doing these things uh yeah, they're real, they're real. and they're they're, yeah the, they're those they're those people that we can they're more powerful than us but they're against us as well there's this uh the dichotomy of uh the gods versus humans that goes through uh greek mythology does it very well uh roman mythology does it as uh angel and david know very well and it's a, a big thing within ancient society that this thing happens all of the time and uh, it's like, I, I love that type of stuff the, there's this that dichotomy between between it that, that the gods are trying to do something and then another god comes in and goes yeah i'm gonna fuck this up <laughs> this is gonna be fun i should i should clarify from that that last comment i just saw pop up it's not a girl's version of hell <laughs> so hell h-e-l is is a person it's a god um it's yeah. loki loki's daughter um, but that's also the name, Hell is the name of the Norse Hell, which I've referred to as Helheim for most of it, just to save the confusion, <laughs> because Hell could be the person or the place. It's like, yeah, Helheim True being, that. Hell is the place of Hell, Heim being the place of Heim yeah. and Hell together, place of person. Uh, yeah, Lo uh, Loki, Loki's daughter, Hell, um, is basically the overseer of Helheim. Um, she's just a, a well I, when i first read about her in my head it was a little girl which was horrific um, yes 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 it always is isn't it it's like well, every single fucking time i was just about to ask you if she was hot thank god i didn't say it right <laughs> before you said that um, no now she's she's a fully grown adult um and she's is she a hot slightly Slightly blue, blue <laughs> um, We're talking about little girls, Dungeon Dan. You know what I'm saying? No, he said it's a, she's a full grown adult. Catch up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry, I was I was, I was a <laughs> behind. <laughs> sorry, there was a delay there that was very unfortunate for you. <laughs> uh, no, she, she's basically a rotten corpse, as far as I'm concerned. Damn, you had to kill my fantasy that fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, David Lingard. Where do you think Games Workshop got their shit? The Dungeon I mean, Dan I mean, took a camera off for a reason. Yeah. So I've <laughs> only got a list of Facebook user, but this uh funny dude explaining English people that's how they think themselves. What, what what's this referring to? It's like I don't want to be a white mate, this an angry thing or anything like that, but I, I'm just wondering what's this a bit of explanation on this? Uh on this, because I think this is actually seems like it'd be really kind of relevant uh on this conversation i don't uh, know it, i don't know uh, uh, 
Jack's usually our person that gets uh, names in. Jack, could you uh, find out who this who this person is? I think Jack is still mute. He's still mute. Uh, that's actually Douglas K. Fryser. I, I think he's Scottish. That's what it is. He's from Scotland. <laughs> oh, that explains everything. Yeah, right. Oh, you don't need to explain anything more. Right? <laughs> yeah, he's the dude from Scotland. So you, you, ain't, you guys already know the deal with Scottish and English. All uh, right, there's, there's no more explanation needs to happen. Just, we just, we just, know just, how just, that works. Just, just, just like the Welsh. The same thing with the Welsh, I'm sure. <laughs> hey, I was born in Wales with an Irish name. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 can, I can do Celtic. One of the listeners <laughs> wrote in that eight of his hobbits fell asleep. So, yeah, why don't we spice this up? Since you all are writers, tell us a short story revolving around anal leakage. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, who is it that thinks about anal leakage quite a lot? I don't know. Who I'm just that trying is. to trying to wake I the don't... audience up. Don't well, point at me, Jack. Out. You brought it up first. <laughs> That's why we don't want you to call us Jack. He's got weird thoughts. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a historical one. I can't think of a historical one right now. <laughs> you burnt me up my historical dirty stories. <laughs> I mean, why, why, why did why did I have a feeling that Dungeon Dan was going to come out with anal leakage? Why 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 did okay. I have a I feeling? don't know. Right, I'd say it's a mystery. <laughs> we'll change it. We'll change it. Not anal leakage. When Richard can go first, anal bleaching. Go. <laughs> oh no! Anal bleaching? Well, that's more yeah. appropriate for my Sasquatch porn uh, novel. Kind of so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, hello, there. let's Lots. go there. Let's go there. Oh, well, sorry, I brought it up. <laughs> a bit, bit, bit of Sasquatch porn. <laughs> that's I never thought I'd say that. <laughs> I want to know why everyone thinks God chose the wrong color. <laughs> yeah. Fifty Shades of Fuzzy. Fifty Shades yeah. of Fuzzy coming out next year. So, oh god, that's <laughs> a great title. You can start hitting up the pool anymore. <laughs> okay. Uh oh, we're gonna get Angel in trouble. His parents are in the room. Nah, it's all right. Why? It's Do they know PG. what it is? What? Never mind. Uh, yeah, we still can't hear you, Jack. Man, I don't know what's going on. I still can't hear you. Well, well that's we're the best close thing. to the end of the show. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say that we're getting to the end of the show, so. Fine, All right, kill. so yeah, yeah, yeah that's what, wind up that's sound. What, yeah. That's what Jack is trying to say. All right, so uh, uh, David, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on my website. It's davidlingard.com or Amazon or Facebook. It's all pretty much the same. Instagram, Twitter. You know, I put I put a lot of tendrils out there. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I can, <laughs> you can certainly tell. All right, so Richard, <laughs> where, can, where can everyone find you? Same thing, Amazon, Facebook, uh, Goodreads, Audible and iTunes. Wild Outs of the Boys and book three coming out very shortly. I promise. Okay, yeah, please. Uh, everybody's waiting. And Nee Edwards says, congratulations on Terminal Me, Nee Edwards says. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. I can't wait. Aiden, can we find you? Uh, you can find me... Uh... Aiden Collier author, Aiden Collier cartography, and I am going to be releasing some new maps on Drive Through RPG uh, this week. So uh, keep your eyes out on that one. Uh, other than that, I'm uh, just writing away like any normal author is. Well, and of course, you can find me on Amazon, Angel Ramon, or Angelus Maximus for my historical fiction stuff. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me. On my Facebook group, The Legion of Advantages Maximus. You can also find me on the Witten on Dead, posting fun stuff. And because Jack is signing for some reason, I'll I'll say that Jack is coming out with a brand new book. Yay. Cover up his first debut book, and I'm I, I'm excited for him. You know, he's been yeah, I I, I beta read beta read uh, what he had, and I love it. Even though I dieted it, so you know that's a <laughs> negative, <laughs> but it's all good. Uh, but, but, but how many books have I died in already? Just too many. All right. And uh, oh, my, ne my, my next audio book comes out in about three weeks. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Okay, very yeah. good. Not too far, not too far. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, keep right. showing the cover. Keep showing the cover. Yeah. Yep. Hey, don't forget. Don't forget Jack, Jack Childers has got a uh, novella slash uh, novel, depending on how long it ends up. Blood Trail. We can't. Out. We can't hear you, Jack. So what you're going oh, for? Four hundred and forty thousand words. He says. Forty thousand words. Okay, and it's a book. It's a full. It's a book. It's a novel. It's a it, stage book it's, 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 it's a big old. Um, He's, he's, he's like this big, mate, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> he's got to do the same language because his audio went boom. Blood there trail, he's, he's not the cute and cuddly uh, Buford in this uh, Sasquatch novel. So No, he's not. He's uh, very yeah. violent. Yeah, this is it's it's going to be a uh, pretty hardcore. So it's coming out soon, and you might even see it available at uh, at our spot at the Bigfoot Festival in May. So. Oh yes, uh, yeah. You were saying about this May. What is it? May? May? What? What? Do you know the exact date? Uh, May six. Townsend, Tennessee. May six. Okay, that'd be good. That'd be yep. good. All right. Before we go, I got one quick thing. Angel okay. Ramon, how was yes, this sir. podcast for you? What was that? Did you Did you enjoy this podcast? Because I have heard rumor that you've had a fantasy about being with two British men at the same time. <laughs> oh, 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 my oh. Thank God, someone heard it. Someone heard it. <laughs> I heard it. I Today's heard your it. lucky you day. You're going to get called out. All right. Yep. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. Oh. This is a written on day. Well, I've got to put my gas mask back on. There we are. There we are. That's, okay. that's it. That's it. Gas mask back on. Uh, anyway, thank, David, this thank you for coming to the show. Broadcast. Always a pleasure. Okay. Oh, there's some weird BDSM stuff going on up there. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's, hey, it's Sorry about that, man. <laughs> <laughs> on that note. I need a way to, 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 to not on this podcast sometimes. I need a way to not on this podcast sometimes. Sorry, I need to... <laughs> Lift this to talk. <laughs> okay. So sorry, David. Okay. This is the Written Undead podcast. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next <laughs> week. Bye. Thanks for coming, guys.